Good morning. I'm going a little rogue this morning because I'm about to take off for a run and I wanted to get this started and I don't want to cook alone. So I'm inviting you into my kitchen with me. I'm using a recipe of, from Tammy of Nutmeg Notebook. You should visit that site. Oh my goodness, does she have some great things, including how to go whole food plant-based, how to use your Breville hot air oven, how to batch cook, just on and on. I've learned a lot from her. Well, this is her Mexican black bean and corn. In other words, bean wa, because it's quinoa and beans and corn. First thing she wants us to do, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking, is to saute some onion. This is my instant pot. You'll see the onion is bright white right now. There is no oil in here. And I'm using the saute function to cook the, um, the onion. I'm going to add some jalapeno and some garlic to it. But onion has enough moisture that it will nicely uh, sort of glaze the pan with a little bit of its juices, lightly brown, and I don't have to add oil. I don't use oil in my cooking. And there's lots of reasons why you can listen to another video, but you just don't need to. I am a whole food, plant-based lifestyle advocate. I'm a health coach. I work with people to help them lose weight, live longer, be healthier, and that's all part of lifestyle. And one of the things that we espouse at Lifestyle Medicine is this getting as close as we can to a plant-based diet and a whole food plant-based diet. So oil isn't whole food, it's processed and there's a lot of omega-3s in the processed oil just like processed foods and omega, sorry, omega-6s in the oil. And our omega-3-6 ratio should be very, very close instead there's so much more of the omega-6s that it's making the omega-3s um, very hard for our body to assimilate because it, that dominates. So I'm watching the, uh, therefore, I don't add oil, I don't even, I, also why, why ingest 120 calories for a tablespoon of oil when, gosh, 120 calories could be a big honey crisp apple, a pound of broccoli, um, uh, a cup of beans that make me very happy and fill me up. So this is getting, uh, this is losing its, its moisture and starting to caramelize. I'll show it to you before I start. But what's going to go in here is a cup and a half, and you're, you have the recipe here on my side, of corn. It could be fresh corn cut off the cob, but it's easy to just to take frozen corn. It needs to be defrosted, so I put it in that plate, put it in the microwave under defrost, and um, I'm just throwing this thing together, and somebody just woke up. I'm gonna show you who it is. Ah, this is Gracie. Now, Gracie has a really funny collar on. Do you want, okay, sorry, honey, I'm gonna take her outside. Excuse me. Yeah, this is, this is Rogue, this video. Why does she have that collar on? Well, because if she is an indoor outdoor cat, all of my cats all my life have been, and unfortunately at 12 years old, she's an expert huntress. And I have this marvelous water fountain in the front yard, it's high, but she's a huntress. And she started coming in with more birds than my heart could take. And so I researched what I could do about that, short of keeping her in, which wasn't an option because we leave doors open and windows open all the time. And um, this collar is supposed to cut back on her birding success by about 87%. And you know what? It does. Um, she has had in the month and a half that she's been wearing that and she seems to be perfectly fine with it, she's had far, far, far less success. So she looks kind of cute, even though a little bit funny. Looks like I'm trying to dress her up as a ballerina, but on the neck. 
and um, it was an inexpensive collar on Amazon, and it's just cloth. The point is that the birds can see the color and therefore pay attention to her when she's sitting at the fountain. I don't know why they wouldn't pay attention to a white cat perch waiting, but that's the way it is. So what's happening is this is starting to, you can't see it all that well, and it's going to brown just a little bit more. What I did is I added some of my broth. I do make my own broth by having a freezer bag full of everything that would otherwise be thrown away, the ends of zucchini that I cut off, the um, peelings of carrot, the bottoms of asparagus, the root, not root ends, but the stems of cilantro and parsley, just on and on, the ends of green onion, and many more. Um, put them in the freezer, when the one gallon bag is full, put it in a pan about an inch and a half uh, or two inches of water over the greens and oranges. Even, even the insides of a bell pepper can go in there. Uh, so the, the flavors vary and, and the broth is free and it's organic because most of my, my food is. So what's happening is I put a little bit of broth, it, it um, frizzled up, frizzled, bubbled up, and deglazed the pan, and that gets the browning really started. And it was just a couple of tablespoons of broth. Now it's doing it again, but it's cooking away. Broth cooks away very quickly, even more quickly than water. And there is a little bit more browning going on. Can you see that my onions are browning? Why does it matter? Because they, it softens the flavor of onions, takes the bite away from the onion when you, um, well, when you slightly brown it, when you cook it a little, little bit, when you dry saute it, that's what this is called. Now, I couldn't have done this with garlic because garlic is, doesn't have as much moisture and it would have burnt by now. Now that we have moisture in there, that the onions are browning, I'm gonna put some garlic in. This is four cloves, sorry for the noise. This is four cloves of garlic. I'm going to add a jalapeno. I went into my backyard and grabbed a jalapeno that had already turned red. And it was actually green and red, so this looks really pretty. And now that we've got that going, just kind of toss it around, brown it a little bit. I'll show you what I see. Maybe someday I'll have an overhead camera. You can see it's browned nicely. That gives it additional flavor. That glazing or deglazing the pan when things are slightly brown caramelizes the uh, juices and gives you a really nice flavor. Now what am I going to add? I have fire roasted organic, no BPA in the can, uh, tomatoes, diced tomatoes. And anything good behind. I have a can of black beans, and I say that, but it's not really, because I use my Instapot to make a couple of pounds of black beans. When I made these, I had onion, kombu, which is a, a Japanese uh, sea vegetable, or a sea vegetable, Asian sea vegetable, or just plain sea vegetable, you can call it, that um, kind of helps make the beans uh, more digestible. And let's see, bay leaf and some garlic and a carrot and some celery all in the pot, but not stirred in or chopped so I could get it out. And so these beans are very, very flavorful. And so I make my own, then I rinse them just like I would the canned beans. And that's a, a um, can of beans, when you buy a can of beans, or it calls for a recipe, a can of beans, if you're doing what I'm doing, that means about a cup and a half of beans. So that's what I did. I'm adding a cup and a, let's see, what is it? A cup and um, a half of quinoa. And most quinoa has to be rinsed. There's a element in there, a, a sort of a tannin, uh, called sapote or sepo, sapote. Uh, that is bitter and a little bit, um, it'll, it'll annoy your 
gastric system. So you always have to rinse quinoa unless it says pre-rinsed. And this is organic, uh, no GMO. It's Bob's Red Mill, it's gluten-free. Just what I want. I prefer up the, the um, tri-colored quinoa, but I, this is what I have here and so I'm using the white. I prefer any fruit or vegetable to be as colorful as possible because the more color, the more uh, nutrients, the variety of nutrients that you get because each of those colors has a phytochemical, phytonutrient that is unique to that color, to that food. This is looking really interesting. I'll show it to you before I add the, the um, other ingredients. I'm adding this, here, let me show you. I'm adding this corn now. I could have added fire roasted corn. I know Trader Joe's has a frozen fire roasted corn. I think that would be fabulous, but I didn't have it. And I'm gonna mix this together, add the broth, close it up, and then take off. And this is to cook five minutes, only five minutes, because everything is, in essence, cooked. Uh, actually, pressure cooked is what I mean. And then let it um, come to, or uh, a natural, what we call a natural release. Okay, look at that. Isn't that neat? It's gonna look a lot like this when it's cooked. Okay, I'm adding one and three quarters cup of my broth. And I'm trying to get these little bits of quinoa down, even though with the pressure built up, it acts as steam and they will cook. Just mix everything in. So we have some savory, we have the jalapeno, the garlic, the onion. Oh, I forgot because they weren't in front of me. The spices, I have chipotle chili powder, I have chili powder, I have um, smoked paprika, Oh, let me see what else. Um, oh, cumin, gotta remember the cumin. So this thing is loaded with flavor. Tammy really knows what she's doing. Now I'll mix that in and let the thing go. I'll take it off saute, so I'm gonna push cancel, put it on five minutes at pressure, and I get to take off for a run. Did I tell you that at 70, having never run before ever, because I'm not a runner. Um, I could race walk, it's not that I don't exercise every morning. I walk very quickly and very briskly for um, almost four miles, or I'm on my bike going up and down hills, little hills, I'm not great on hills. Uh, but I signed up for a 10K. So on October 23rd, this is um, July 8th, on October 23rd, I am gonna run a 10K. Got up at 70 years old, plant-based, old lady who had never run before. Why? Because I want to show what we can do when we take good care of ourselves. My name is Nan Simonson. I am the author of Aging Powerfully and it's about the fact that with lifestyle adaptations, taking care of yourself in all ways, including going as close as you can to a whole food plant-based or adding lots of whole foods that are plant-based, staying away from the processed foods, we can put ourselves into such great condition that we can live in our later years as if we are in our younger years. Too many people around me starting in their 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s are getting sick on medications, having constant procedures, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, okay. Push pressure on five minutes. This is why I love an Instant Pot. I get to walk away and go for a run. I'm only up to, a, <laughs> because I just started this, um, gosh, what, six days ago. Uh, signed up for the race, did my first mile, couldn't get around it, um, just slogging along, uh, mainly walking. But the second time I tried, and it wasn't easy because I kept wanting to stop, I ran a mile, real slow, in real, probably terrible form. Um, but I'm doing more, a little bit more every day. I'm in a training program that I got online. And um, I, what do I have, 14 weeks left? 
to get myself to run 6.2 miles at a decent uh, at a decent pace. As a 70 year old woman, I'm real proud of that and any of us can take on new things. If we just take good care of ourselves and look ahead with power rather than looking ahead with fear and reservation about what's to come as if it's a bad thing, it doesn't have to be. Have a great day because I know I'm going to and I'll be back in just a little while to show you this. I'll splice the videos together. Okay, bye-bye. Hello, I'm back. All right, you can see my Instant Pot says that it's been an hour and five minutes. I've been busy, we're getting ready to take off and um, for a while and then have our lunch. And let me show you what we have here. As I described, it's very similar. I'm gonna grab a fork, sorry. It's very similar to what it was like when it went in. All right, here you are. And use a fork whenever you use a grain or make a grain in your Instant Pot to kind of fluff it up. Don't spoon it and mash it. So I'm gonna pour this, look at this. Oh, it smells heavenly. I'm gonna pour this into, you know what? No, I'm not. First of all, I'm going to mix in the last ingredients, then I'll do that. All right, the last ingredients are the zest of a lemon. How do you zest a lemon? This is a lemon zester. No, not a lemon, lime. All right, and uh, I need the juice of this lime as well. But if I juiced it first and then tried to zest it, the skin would not have the rigor that it has surrounding this big full lime, and I would have a very hard time juicing it, or zesting it rather, once it's been juiced. So I'm going all the way around and getting that lovely, very citrusy flavor into this dish. So we had those spices, we had cumin and then the chilies, and the jalapeno and the quinoa and corn and black bean oh boy oh boy now shake 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 i'm going to show you this in case you haven't seen this before let me grab something all right i wonder if you can see this before i stir it in can you see yeah you can see that right there, that's the zest. And it's unmistakable, that beautiful lime flavor um, at its best. And then I'm gonna cut, I wonder if I could have get, gotten more. Well, I put it away, I think we're fine. I'm gonna cut the lime in half and an easy way to get the juice is this nifty citrus juicer that you put the flat end down and then, and usually, I'm so stingy, I don't want to give it up until I turn it around, kind of fold it in half, and try to get just the last little bit out. Yeah, see, that was worth at least a teaspoon. Do the same thing on the other side. Lots of lime juice, yum, oh boy, and Fold it in half, and one more time. Try to squeeze out that last little bit. Let's see what I get. That was worth it. All right, then I keep my cilantro in a glass jar. You have to change the water once in a while, every few days. This is near the end. I buy it once a week from a farm store, and they have these huge bunches like bouquets. I chopped up. The recipe calls for a half a cup. This is probably a little more. And I'll take as much as I can. Whenever you see something like that, oh, chop up parsley, chop up cilantro, chop up thyme, rosemary, do it. And 
add as much as you can appreciate flavor-wise. With the strong herbs like rosemary, you could overdo it, but this is just adding beautiful color and beautiful flavor. Uh, there are people who are genetically predisposed to dislike cilantro. Did you know that? It has a soapy flavor to them. Um, that's a real thing. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm not one of them because it's, it, to me, it's, it's very similar to basil, but different than basil. Fresher, cleaner, lighter. Uh, and I like basil too. So I would probably add chopped basil if I couldn't stand cilantro. I could add parsley, uh, but it, it um, cilantro, oh, maybe it's memory and maybe it's just a, a, a bias, but cilantro, I relate more to Latin foods. Okay, then we pour in this beautiful pile of what's going to be a meal again and again and again this week. It's going to be on my chopped salad for lunch. It's going to be, as I said, tacos for the group. We have a two-year-old here that my husband and I are taking care of for four days. Oh my gosh, those of you with little ones, we are, we're adoring him. I'm just gonna leave this, well, I'll put it here. But, oh my gosh, they never hold still. My husband had him out playing ball the first part of this video, and now they're watching a movie, Madagascar or something, um, but that'll last a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay, got a little bit more color here, and this is the finished dish. Isn't that lovely? Isn't that just lovely? Mm, I wish you could taste it. Okay, now, <laughs> As I said earlier, have a great day because I'm going to take care. Bye-bye.